Yes, I know this is what everyone else is doing, but what does God say? Yes, I know this is what the world says we must do, but what does God say? Yes, I know the world says um, um, Big Bang, but what does God say? Hello everyone, peace and love to you all. I hope you are having a blessed day. I just wanted to come with a really quick message um, on a scripture that I read recently and I wanted to share my thoughts on. And it is James chapter 1 verse 22. And it reads, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And verse 23 says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. This verse made me really think of um, how far I've come from in my journey with Christ, to be honest with you. And I think it was something I wanted to share because I feel a lot of people today um, maybe are not aware that the scripture even exists, just like I was. <laughs> or might be aware that it exists, but don't quite understand the spiritual revelation behind um, when James says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves when we think hearers of the word what word are we hearing because it says be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves so are we actually hearing what we should be doing this is the question are we actually being taught the doctrines that the bible and christ himself preached unto the disciples are we actually being told what we ought to be doing so that we do not deceive ourselves thinking we are children of God when we truly are living opposite and contrary to everything that God himself has proclaimed that a child of God ought to live by? So I don't know if this, this is just a question that we can put to ourselves, especially in the world today. There's a lot of liberal Christians and modern Christians in the world today that are far, far removed from the word that was established and written and spoken by Christ himself when he was on this earth and lived among men. So we really, if we are to do what the word says, we are to know what the word says, we are to study what the word says, and we are to seek God's revelation and his strength to do as the word says, lest we deceive ourselves. And I think this is just something that struck me really hard because I feel if I ever, if I had ever heard someone say to me these words in a revelation and a light that um, I ought to have heard it, I think it would have sparked an action to do better in the life that I was living as a Christian, but not really with the precepts of a Christian child and not really with the understanding and with the passion of a child of God. With I was living with the concept that I was a child of God, but not, not the doing of the concept of the child of God. And this is lacking a lot, if we are honest, in the lives of many Christians today. And although we understand that God doesn't seek our perfection in our doing because it is by Christ's righteousness that we are saved and not by any works that we do, lest any should boast, as the word of God says, but our doing is to be in harmony with the precepts of God. Why? Because a, a child will reflect the name of his father, if he's of our father. You know, if a child is born, usually they get the last name of their father and they are required to uphold the family name and to bring pride and joy to the family name and not shame and not ridicule and not to um, tarnish the family name and image and character because often a name is associated with character when someone speaks of their good name or their good reputation it's also to do with their character so when we are children of god as the bible says god is a spirit that means we are born of the spirit and that means we are to reflect the character of who is our father and if we are not reflecting that character, then what we are doing is bringing a bad reputation, a bad name and a bad image 
of who our father is, of who our heavenly father is. And God forbid that even after all the work that Christ has done in, in stealing and in, in imputing the righteousness of his works unto us, lest we should then take it and tarnish the image of the very God that we profess to love. God forbid. So by the grace of God, I just wanted to make this message plain and clear and short to understand that as children of God, we also have to reflect the character and the name and the precepts of the God that we serve. Our life is to be a reflection of his word. But for us to reflect that in our doing, we are to know what he requires of us. You cannot do what you do not know. And more often than not, we find comfort in not knowing because we want to continue living the life that we are so accustomed to doing. And unfortunately, no child of God will inherit what is awaiting them if they give it away. Like Esau sold his birthright. There is no such thing as you are once saved and forever saved. We are to cherish that birthright and that inheritance so much so that if anything is to tempt us to give it up for a moment of pleasure, for a moment of joy, for a moment of relief, we are to say, no, 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 I value my birthright. This is precious to me. I cannot give it away for a moment of relief and pleasure. I must keep to my principles and the standards that God himself has fought so hard to bring me to and to make plain to me. Yes, we are saved by the righteousness of Christ. Yes, we are saved by the blood of Christ and the atonement and the sacrifice that Christ himself made for us. But also we are to obey the commandments of God and live in harmony with the precepts of God. And we are to let the righteousness of Christ go before us in our thinking, in our doing, in all that we profess to know, to love and to encourage and to influence even those around us. It is all to begin. It's all to begin with what the Bible says. It's all to begin with what God says. Thus saith the Lord. What does God require of me? Yes, I know this is what everyone else is doing, but what does God say? Yes, I know this is what the world says we must do, but what does God say? Yes, I know the world says um, um, big bang, but what does God say? What does God say we must do? What does God say brings him pleasure when he, when he comes to see his children abiding in? What does God say? This should be that which we seek to live by, that which we seek to do. Let us seek to only please God and no one else. As children of God, let us make this the precepts, the principles that we live by, that we are quickened by, even as the word of God says. Because if we are children of God and our lives are no different to those that are living in a different faith or that are living without God's precepts, are living without faith in God and Christ and our lives are exactly the same as those who do not have God in their lives then that just goes to reflect that we don't have God in our lives so let's not deceive ourselves but instead let's seek for that life that brings joy for the Christian because no Christian is a Christian without conversion that's the truth let us seek for conversion of heart and let us continue to seek to do right by the God that we love, by God Almighty, Jehovah whom we serve. Let us do all that we can so that we might do better and reflect truly the character of Christ that when others see, oh, that's a Christian. Oh, what makes them a Christian? Oh yeah, the lifestyle is different. Oh yeah, the way they talk is different. Oh yeah, the perspective is different. And not that we are Christians that look no different to the rest of the world. God forbid, but let us reflect the character and image of Christ and let us seek to do better. I pray that by the grace of God, we might be able to see and be convicted of our weaknesses, of the things that we are to change and of the life that we are to reflect for the sake of our souls, for the sake of our direction and for the sake of, of, of the love that God has for us. So I just continue to encourage you, my brethren. I've got one quote to end this message with, and it is a quote taken from a book, and it's just for the youth. It says, youth in the name of Jesus, I appeal to you whom I shall soon meet around the throne of God. Study your Bible. It will prove to you not only the pillar of cloud by day, 
but the pillar of fire by night. It opens before you a path leading up and still upward, bidding you go forward. The Bible, you do not know its worth. It is a book for the mind, for the heart, for the conscience, the will and the life. It is the message of God to you in such simple style that it meets the comprehension of a little child. It is the message of God to you. So cherish it and make it a part of your life. Thank you for watching. I'm just going to close with a prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to share a message. And we pray that you shall impact our lives, Lord, with your word and by your grace and by your spirit. May you guide and direct us to all truth. Father, I pray that this platform shall be used for your glory and your glory only. I pray and I ask that you shall direct us in all that we, which you need us to do, which is pleasing unto you. Help us to live in harmony with your word. Teach us your ways and continue to convert our hearts unto our precious Jesus, that we may do all that which is pleasing unto you and that we may find joy in keeping your precepts and we might delight in giving you worship. We might delight and find joy and pleasure in our whole lives being of worship to you, O oh God. So we pray that you shall continue to touch our hearts, change our lifestyles, change our minds and by your word, O oh Lord, help us to overcome. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. Bye for now.